For the last couple of weeks, we have been doing our homage to English cuisine in honor of the upcoming coronation. But we're going to take a bit of a break today, mainly because our church group have been craving some South of the Border fare for the week. Welcome to another episode of Sunday Dinners with Tina. This week, we're going to try a quintessential Spanish dish called paella. The dish is paella is said to be a perfect union between two, two cultures from Spain, the Romans for the pan and the Arab who brought the rice. There's actually a lot of different versions of this dish from different countries all over the world, originating in the rice growing areas on Spain's Mediterranean coast. The dish is especially associated with the region of Valencia. Paella takes its name from the paellera, the utensil which is which it is cooked, a flat round pan with two handles. Paella is traditionally eaten from the pan. It is said by some that the word paella originates from the Arab word bagia, meaning leftovers. The term paella actually refers to the pan that it is cooked in. All the way back to the ancient Sanskrit language, the term pa means to drink, and the Roman culture from the Latin made words like patera, patina, and patella, which could mean a container to drink. Over time, the size of the pan grew instead of the depth, so you could get a hot fire with maximum evaporation. In Asia, the Filipino version of paella, or paella, is the perfect example of Spanish influences in our cuisine. A byproduct of 300 years of colonization, it is a delicious fusion of our local tastes and cultural heritage. Today we're going to be tackling a Mexican variation to this dish. This easy recipe marinates the chicken in paprika and oregano for added flavor and adds the shrimp at the last minute for fantastic results. Serve this delicious paella in the center of your table so everyone can dig in. To start, we're going to mix two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of paprika, or taco seasonings, salt, and black pepper to taste. We're going to be marinating two pounds of skinless, boneless chicken breasts cut into two inch pieces. Allow the chicken to marinate in the fridge for a few hours or better yet, overnight. For the paella, we're going to need two tablespoons of olive oil, three cloves of garlic, crushed or chopped, one teaspoon crushed red pepper flakes, Two cups of uh, uncooked short grain white rice. Um, they usually use bomba or Valencia type of rice, but this is today we're going to be using sushi rice. And you're going to need uh, one large bay leaf, just one. Um, and you're going to need a half, half a bunch of Italian flat leaf parsley, chopped, one quart of chicken stock, two medium uh, lemons, zested, and two tablespoons of olive oil, again with the olive oil, um, one medium Spanish onion, chopped, and one medium red bell pepper, coarsely chopped, not too small, not too big, okay? Half a teaspoon, uh, this is optional, half a teaspoon of diced jalapenos. If you don't like it hot, you, you can omit this, but the, so this is optional. One pound of shrimps, peeled and deveined, make sure you devein it um, and peel it. Okay, and one pound of chorizo sausage. Now, 
this is taken out of the casings and um, crumbled up. Okay? Okay, so what I like about this recipe, this dish, is you only really need one pan to cook everything. I like to use a large shallow pan that can go from the stove to the table. Table, Easy peasy. Now usually in Spain they use um, a paella pan with the two handles, but I don't have one of those. So any large uh, shallow pan will do. Okay, so essentially we're going to be building layers of flavors so everyone will be able to taste everything in every single bite from the starchy rice, the spicy chorizos, and the succulent shrimps. If you don't have a pan that's big enough for all your ingredients, you could certainly cook all the parts separately. But if you could, I would suggest using any large shallow pan. That way, all your flavors will meld beautifully together as you cook. Okay, so let, let's get our pan ready and begin cooking some flavorful and delicious paella. Okay, so we're going to start with about two tablespoons of our, of our EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. I love using this oil because it's very healthy for you. It improves chronic inflammation and possibly plays a role in the death of cancer cells. Okay, into our EVOO, we're going to saute our garlic. Now be careful with your garlic. I love garlic, but not when it's burnt. And we're going to saute this with our red pepper flakes. And just saute them until they're aromatic. Make sure you, again, make sure you don't burn the garlic. There's nothing worse than burnt garlic on your dish. Because otherwise your paella will taste bitter. Okay, now to this, we're going to add our marinated chicken. Now let it sear a bit. We need it to cook. We need it to cook really well. Okay, so now we're gonna add our spicy Mexican chorizos. Mm, this is really spicy. Okay, we want to be able to taste all our flavorful, flavorful spices in every bite of our dish. Okay, so there's no really need, no need to worry about fully cooking your chicken. This dish will take about 20 minutes to cook, to finish cooking. So by the time we're done, it should finish cooking through as well. A 
Okay, so before we add our rice, we're going to throw in our, our onions. Our bell peppers. And at this point, you could adjust the spiciness, the hotness of this dish. You could add um, jalapenos if you wanted. And sometimes I even add Tabasco to it. Because paella is a very versatile dish. You really could add anything. You could add broccoli. Um, you could add mussels, squid. It's up to you how simple or even extravagant if you would like this dish to be. Okay, so once your veggies are done and the onions are nice and translucent, we're ready to move on to our rice. In Spain, they traditionally use bomba or arroz, arroz rezon, redondo, a short grain rice from Valencia. In the Philippines, in Asia, particularly in the Philippines, however, we usually use a sweet, sticky type of rice, or as we call it, malagkit. Today, we're going to be using sushi rice. I think it's the perfect combination of bomba rice and Filipino sticky rice. Now, this is a somewhat of a fatty dish. As your veggies are cooking, you'll notice some of, some of your flavorful oil is settling at the bottom of your pan. Now that's good. We need that pan to coat the grains of rice. Okay? So we're going to add our rice in. Just make sure that it's all mixed in together. Now because this Japanese rice is somewhat sticky, you want to make sure that every grain is evenly coated in the fat. That's going to keep them separate as they cook. Otherwise, you'll end up with big clumps of rice. You also want to create that toasty flavor by stirring your rice around. Essentially, you'll be sauteing the rice, like fried rice. You'll see your rice turn from opa opaque to translucent. So we're going to be doing this for about two to three minutes. Okay, so next layer, we'll be adding some broth to our dish. But first, we have to add uh, some Mexican seasonings. Normally, I would use um, saffron, which is an essential part of paella. But unfortunately, saffron is a bit too hard to come by in Montana. Not to mention, it's a bit hard on the pocketbook. With a wholesale price uh, of as high as $10,000 per pound, saffron is the single most expensive food on earth. Nice.
We're also going to be throwing in uh, a large bay leaf here. Now, don't forget, after you finish your dish, to take it out. This is just to give you some aromatics and flavor your dish a bit. But after it's done, you need to take it out. Okay, so now we're going to add in our broth. This is our chicken broth. Make sure, make sure you scrape the bottom of the pan with your spatula to get some of those flavorful bits that sometimes get stuck to the pan. But don't stir too much. You don't want to activate the starches in your rice too much unless you're trying to make risotto. Then by all means, stir away. What we're trying to create is essentially rice pilaf. Okay, now lastly, we're going to stir in some parsley. And some lemon zest. Okay, so now once everything is stirred together, we're going to bring it back up to a simmer. Cover it and let it cook for about 20 minutes or, or until all that liquid is absorbed into the rice. So let's check on it after 20 minutes. Okay, so once our liquid is about 90% absorbed. We're going to add, actually, about 100% absorbed right now. Now we're going to add our shrimp. Personally, I like my shrimp a bit on the underdone side, but just to make sure you don't overcook your shrimp or they will be hard and rubbery. I love shrimps on paella. So as much shrimps as I can put in my paella, the better. Okay. So we're gonna cook, cook our shrimps for about two to three minutes. That should be enough. Now before serving, we're gonna add some more fresh parsley and a bit of lemon. Mexican style paella. Thank you for joining me in another edition of Sunday Dinners with Tina. 
If you like our content, please don't forget to click the, bu the like button and subscribe so we can send you a notification for our next episodes. Until next time, buen provecho!